Hello, everybody. Welcome to LOAC TV, the Library of American Comics Television. Uh, my my name is Curtis Findlay. I'll be your host today, and we are going to be taking through. Uh, we're going to be taking a look through this massive book. Look how big this is. It's bigger than my head. Kniff, a visual biography. Uh, this is a book that. Um, you know, there are lots of books that I could say are the, the best book that Library of American Comics has put out, but this probably is at maybe the top of the list. I'm not joking at all. So uh, we're going to check this out. Um, before we get started, of course, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're all there. Just look up LOA Comics or Library of American Comics. And uh, since you're here on, if you're watching here on YouTube, you can subscribe and, and you know, like this video and follow us there as well. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do a video, a live stream video like this every week, showcasing a different Library of American Comics book. So uh, be with us uh, next week as we uh, check out something different. Um, if you want to leave a comment, we definitely welcome your comments, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, just uh, show, leave a comment and be part of the discussion. If you've got something to say, we would love to hear you say it. We'll, we'll bring your comment right up on the screen there, and you can be part of our discussion. I have a special guest with us today. Uh, let's bring him up on the screen here. I want to say hi to Matt Thurber. Hi, Matt. How are you doing today? Good, uh, Curtis. It's uh, Matt Tauber. Oh, Tauber, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I already made a mistake. I'm That's only a couple right. minutes into the... I know uh, uh, James Thurber was That's... You know, acquainted with Kniff, and that might be the... That is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> James <laughs> Thurber, exactly. Matt Tauber, okay. And so you are the associate editor of this book, Kniff, A Visual Biography. Uh, is that right? What was your role in, the, in, in this book here? So it was, uh, you know, I don't want to overblow it, uh, Curtis. It was pretty minor. Um, That's okay. It was very nice of Dean to give me the contributing editor uh, credit. Uh, I met uh, Dean through Bo Smith at a convention uh, just about, I think just after volume six was coming out or had come out of, of Terry and the Pirates. And Dean mentioned his, his vision of doing a Kniff art book. And I was like, you know, hey, you need any help? Let me know. Yeah. And I kind of, uh, you know, bugged him about it for a while and uh he and uh lorraine were coming down to the uh billy ireland cartoon library and museum i don't think it was it wasn't called the billy uh yet right it was, uh, uh still the cartoon research library and uh, i live in cincinnati so i'm a two-hour drive from there so nice so, hey you know what? I, I'd love to come up and help give you a hand. So he said, come on up. And we spent the day just looking through really boxes and boxes of Kniff art and things. And it was just, you know, for a Kniffite like me, it was just a fan's dream. In heaven, for sure. And yeah, and way more stuff really than, you know, two people could have looked at in a day. So I was really glad uh, that I went. And, you know, I would look through stuff and if I found something that I thought, you know, hey, this is, you know, pretty amazing and maybe this should be included in the book, um, you know, I would take it to Dean and he would have um, have it marked uh, for uh, Susan Liberator, uh, the yeah. great uh, librarian there at the museum. And uh, and a lot of that stuff ended up in the book. So amazing. I was really pleased with that. And then he also... Um, before the book came out, he sent me the PDFs and uh, I did some proofreading. So um, was was glad to help out in that way. There's one mistake in the book that uh -oh. we want to talk about. We can, but one mistake I didn't uh, I didn't catch. So uh, sure, uh, was it was it corrected in an additional printing? I don't, was there an additional printing? I don't know. My copy is a second edition or a second oh, really? printing. So okay. let's uh, let's go through there and see if they corrected that mistake. <laughs> Oh, so also tell me about this guy that's uh, poking over your shoulder here. So this uh, behind me is a Steve Canyon uh, chalk talk. Uh, kind of fans know he would uh, when he would make appearances, whether it was at you know a school or you know uh, a women's club or any type of meeting, he would have an easel and chalk, and instead of just standing up at a podium, you know, and talking about the cartoon business he would stand up and talk about the cartoon business while he was actually drawing 
a, a cartoon. And then usually somebody in the audience would, uh, you know, get to take this home or somebody would be gifted with the final drawing. So this is a Steve Canyon chalk talk, uh, that I won, uh, at an auction. Very cool. Um, I think it's been quite a while now, maybe about 10 years ago. And Steve, uh, is, has hung on the wall ever since. <laughs> That's really awesome. That's great. Okay. So what's your association with Kniff in general? Like how far back does that go? So that for me personally, it just goes back to about, uh, the late nineties, I think, um, okay. I'm, I'm 49. Uh, I've been collecting comics since I was 10. Yeah. And, uh, I was actually, uh, staying at a friend's house and he had the Steve Canyon magazines, the, the reprint series that kitchen sink did oh, okay. in the eighties and nineties. And, you know, I just pulled one off the shelf and started reading it. And I was like, well, where have I been? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and then learning that, you know, Hey, you know, the Ohio connection, you know, and I'm from Cincinnati and he's from uh, Hillsboro, which is just not very far away. And he grew up in Dayton, which is about an hour from me. And, and uh, uh, just became real attractive, just not to the art, not just to the art, but the story and Kniff himself and his history and kind of his philosophy of things. So that's where I, you know, became the big Kniff fan. That's very cool. That's yeah, that's great. I, uh, I had heard of him and seen, you know, random strips that were examples in other books and that kind of stuff. But it wasn't until Dean put out his Terry and the Pirates collection, it's right, right behind me here, that uh, I got associated with Kniff. So it's, okay. it's just uh, amazing to discover. And, and this book, let me tell you, if you only know Kniff through his cartooning, then that's like... I was just amazed at some of the stuff that's in here, the variety of content. And like, he was such a, an amazing artist in many different styles and many different mediums. So, so talented. That's the kind of the meat of the book for me, Curtis is, you know, the, uh, and it's great to, you know, reprint Terry and Steve strips in there. Um, but for me, it's the, the oddball stuff. Yep. The line drawings, the, you know, um, the water the portraits color, he did. Uh, portraits Any, are just incredible, yeah. Anything he did is regarding painting, which, you know, he didn't normally do, but that the fact that he, you know, he was a painter as well and really yeah. didn't utilize it all that much, that's that's what, what really grabs me. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this book. Uh, I'm going to turn on my second screen here, and... Um, and we'll solo it so everybody can have a good look at what this book looks like. So, uh, first of all, it is one of the biggest books other than like the huge format, um, like uh, uh, the Flash Gordon books. It's not quite that big, but this is bigger than like if you've seen the Screwball book or um, any of the, the Rip Kirby volumes. This one is bigger than that. Uh, and it's, it's just beautiful. It has a great watercolor drawing here on the on the cover yeah i feel like the sickles book is a good companion to this uh yes this book curtis definitely we've got some cool art in the description on the back the, the cover has like this gold uh sort of foil ink to it which is is very cool it gives a good shine um it makes it hard to show up on the camera though so <laughs> but uh yeah there's a dust jacket we'll take off the dust jacket so i can easily work with uh look at the book here nice foil stamp under the cover Let's see. Okay, I'm holding the camera with one hand. This is always the hard part is getting the dust jacket off. <laughs> Bear with me, everybody. Okay, there we go. So looking on the inside of the book here, it's just Lorraine Turner is the, uh, the art director. She's the designer here and just really, really cool stuff. Uh, this, of course, Dean used this image on the very first volume of Tearing the Pirates, but not this watercolor version. So that's very cool. We have a forward from Lucy Shelton Caswell from the, the Ohio State University. And Dean himself gives an introduction. I like what he says here that first and foremost, what is he, where does he say? First and foremost, this is an art book. Yet the drawings are supplemented by ancillary pieces and personal memorabilia. So that gives us a hint that, you know, the writing is going to be, it's not like the, I mean, the Toth, the Toth books that he does is kind of like that. 
uh, as well, where it's a lot of artists featured, but there's more writing in those ones than there is in here. This is a cartoon he did of um, Steve Canyon. It's called Steve Canyon and Me from 1948. But we get little cool things like that all throughout the book. Bruce Canwell does all of the main writing and he just does, you know, a one page introduction to each section going through his life in art. So this one is an introduction to the early years of Kniff. And Matt, feel free to pipe in anytime you want sure. to say anything. Yeah, there and there's like you just showed that that first drawing, and I uh, there's more of those uh, uh, from the um, Dayton News. You know, there's um, and if you have access to say something like newspapers.com, which is a subscription service, um, you can actually find find more of those cartoons that way. The, usually the Library of American Comics uses um, like a matte finish on their paper, but because this is an art book, they went for a little for a glossy. So it, there's a little shine from my light above, which is unfortunate, but we're going to make the best of that. There is just so much stuff that he did, just random stuff throughout the years. I'm amazed at some, like these are all for probably the university newspapers as well. And that kind of stuff is um, Emerald El Elbert. Yeah, that was for the um, that was for a Boy Scout strip. Ah, yeah. And uh, the previous page had a had a uh, I think that was a chicken noodle strip, and he did, you know, twenty or thirty of those for like when he was at the high school, Stivers High School. Amazing. And here's another example of some uh, different styles he has here. The caption reads that uh, these are Canterbury Tales uh, characters that he would draw for his teacher. And she kept them all throughout her life after, uh, after he gave them to her. I love these pictures. Just the, uh, just the style, the art deco fonts and everything to go along with it just looks wonderful. But you can already see, like, what is this one here? Um, what does it say? 1936. This is a 1936 poster for a football game, I guess. Um, but you can already see, like, his, his style is very distinctive. Yeah, that's like, uh, that's going to be a young Pat Ryan right there. Totally. Here's another one, but in a very different style. Yeah, these were... Uh program covers to programs program books for the football games here's some cartoon work that he did for uh, publications campus publications check out the detail in this one 1925 All of each one of these pages is beautifully laid out. Here's one of the paintings that I was just amazed at. Right. 1927, an oil painting. It says, made as Kniff's first assignment when he studied painting with Professor James Hopkins. That's a first assignment. <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. It's wonderful. Here's and then a that's just, you know, that's, you, that's the early uh, of the r risque Kniff. But, yep. You know. We would see in uh, like mail, mail call. call. Yeah, right. totally. <laughs> Another comic strip. So this is college. Here's some. This was definitely older, 1947. These ones are cool. These ones are uh, letters that he would write to his sweetheart at the time, whom he called Bunny. So he made this Bunny Town Bugle. To, instead of writing letters, he would write little newspapers for her. <laughs> it's very cool. Amazing that you have these too. It's like uh, they're just yeah. Yeah. there waiting for you to, to reprint in this book. They saved everything. <laughs> it's unreal. 
and we have lots of pictures of Hinef himself doing his work all throughout this book. There's a Sunday page from Steve Canyon. Um, sometimes, like this one's definitely not early years, but they stick it in because it relates to uh, the other stuff that appears in the pages. Right. Yeah, Part two. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that, that's, you know, that was about growing up in Dayton. No, yes. So. Right. Oh, man. So the second section here is getting out into the workforce and becoming a newspaper man. That, uh, that last one, the ESOP up to date on the prior page, the, if you go to the Billy Ireland, they have that on permanent display. You can see that piece of art. Great. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Milton Kniff has a, a very big connection with Billy Ireland himself, kind of a, a protege of Billy Ireland. And one of the, I think it's too bad Billy gets the short end of the stick. A lot of his protege sort of eclipsed him in popularity. And Milton Kniff being probably the most prominent example of that. Right, because really Ireland's work didn't really make it out of Columbus, whereas, you know, Kniff and Sickles had a national audience. Yeah. Look at that. I love this, the way he plays with the blacks and leaves off the, a lot of the lines to, to just suggest the edges of the character. Really cool stuff. I love that you have so much original art reproduced in here as well. Just uh, you can see the paste ups and what whatnot. Now this this one, where you go back a page and you can see how he does his lettering with all of the whiteout on there. <laughs> it's just wonderful. The little details like that. Look at that portrait. If you're tuning in and you want to leave a comment or two about what you see here, go right ahead. Uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we welcome uh, the discussion. For me, these early chapters are the most interesting uh, because of the variety of stuff. Like I said, the variety of work that he does. Once he gets into the, uh, the intense schedule of having to do the dailies and Sundays, um, I find that he either he didn't save it or he just wasn't doing a lot of painting and such at that point. So the later chapters, we don't see the same sort of variety as we do here. Right. I, I think that that's part, part of probably being in the, in the newspaper art department, uh, Curtis being called on to do, you know, to do just whatever, anything, that's right. <laughs> whatever needed to be done. And that's just, a good point. You know, you look at the, these 1920s uh, papers and just the massive amount of of artwork involved um, before really photography kind of took over. There's a great Santa Claus right there. Yeah, really his, his likenesses, you know, like that we don't see again until he does the uh aviation hall of fame portraits in the in the 80s right yeah it's very true which were you know, which we'll see in this book here some of the you know some of the last things he did so he kind of came he came full circle a little bit this feature was just talking about kind of current events what's new in music and, and radio and in the movies and such i like that last one uh on that page because it's more of a fumetti <laughs> right, totally. <laughs> Another feature escapes from the pen. Just such a great snapshot of the time, the vehicles, the clothes. Quite wonderful. Here's a Billy Ireland piece right here. So that was a, uh, he had a weekly uh, page, he uh, Billy Ireland did in the Columbus Dispatch. He did the, the whole page uh, himself, marked it out himself. And I've got a huge book of Billy Ireland of these pages. Uh, and it's quite wonderful just to, because you have to be big. He crams so much into each yes. page. 
and you have to be able to like sit there and look at it for a long time to fully get everything that's going on. It's so, so intricate. I love it. John Tinney uh, McCutcheon. Yeah, McCutcheon was a big uh, influence on Kniff, and he was also a fellow uh, Sigma Chi. Kniff was very proud of his uh, connection with the fraternity, Sigma Chi fraternity. Right. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit here. I'll just give you a brief look at these overhead shots here. If you see but, anything that stands uh, out, you can tell me to stop. The uh, the thing I find interesting, uh, I didn't. I was looking through the book last night, Curtis, and yeah. the thing I didn't think about before uh, the like Kniff's London and these these kind of trip chicks was uh, <laughs> did he then write off the trip like as a, <laughs> as a business <laughs> expense? Oh, oh yeah, I was, to, I was there to work. <laughs> totally, he'd be smart if he did. <laughs> Here's a really detailed one. The Daily Lunar. Yeah, that's a, this is kind of a crazy one. Almost it reminds me a little bit of Wally Wood, actually. It's kind of mad magazine-ish. Mm -hmm. He doesn't usually get that quite that cartoony. You let me know if you, we get to that page with the with the mistake in it too. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's later on in the Steve Canyon section. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Some of his editorial cartooning. You love the detail he gets he puts in there. Still not quite the style that we recognize him. Like his blacks aren't quite spotty enough. <laughs> Some more streamlined work. These are cool illustrations. Full page. What's, what what always strikes me is is can you imagine a time, Curtis? People were reading serialized fiction in the newspaper. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> and when you look at like kind of the old magazines, like Saturday Evening Post. Than life, um, just the <laughs> amount of like short fiction people were reading, you know, because those were the popular magazines of the day. Totally. Here's something that's cool to see is thumbnail sketches and just uh, sketch sketches in general of his work before it's fully inked and rendered. It looks very cool just to see all of the work he puts in behind behind here here's some more illustrations for some of the prose features in newspapers this one looks like more like a crime noir story but oh, we're getting a few comments here he, uh, robert says that other one looks like a cracked cover a cracked <laughs> magazine. and omar just omar comics just wants to thank us for sharing for sharing this book yep you're welcome Love the light and shadow play in this one here. Very nice. The nice thing that's about having these blown up to full page as well is you can get right in there and see so much of the detail of his of his uh, shading techniques. Really wonderful. The perspective on this one is very cool. And you know, credit to Dean for having that eye, and you know, and Lorraine as well of what to highlight. And... So here's some work from Noel Sickles, whom uh, Milton had a very strong friendship with, and they worked together and collaborated on a lot, on a lot of stuff, including <laughs> these cartoons Mr. here. Mr. Coffee Nerves. They uh, they signed it as Paul Arthur. That's the name that they went by when they did stuff together. It's a combination of their middle name. Right. Yes. 
Paul Arthur again. And just so we can get a good example of how similar in style they are, this is Noel Sickles' Scorchy Smith. They put in a full four uh, strips for us to enjoy there. Some more original art scans, blown up to full page. Here's what a, a, a comedy. This one is interesting because you get the, the text on the, the bottom and there's one little page. There are a few cartoons that are like that, a few comic strips. So this is, uh, this is now he's with the Associated Press. Right. Yeah, same with all of the stuff that we've seen with No Sickles. It's all AP, Associated Press. He's, his cart his uh, strip work is getting a lot more refined. These are really cool. Just the composition and uh, the snapshots that these are just slice of life in the 30s. Very cool stuff. Lots of examples of these ones. Yeah, I think it's uh, a month's worth. And, yeah. And then we get into his first long feature, Dickie Dare. Some original art reproductions, including the very first strip. And then we get a short continuity of Dickie Dare. If you haven't, this is my first time reading Dickie Dare, I was reading it in this book. But that's it. And then we get into a chapter four, which is all about Terry and the pirates. Again, Bruce does a nice little introduction and we get a good sample of the strips. There's a lot of advertising. This is the very first Sunday. This is all stuff that, all of these strips you'd see if you have the Terry and the Pirates books from Library of American Comics. So I don't think I need to dwell too much on these. But I mean, you just stand back, you, you bring the camera back and you can see, I love how balanced his light and dark is through here. It's a great use of uh, Zipitone shading right. and uh, his spot blacks are just amazing. Of course, one of the more famous strips right there. Here's a cool watercolor advertisement. I don't even, what does it say here? Oh, it just, yeah, it just says it's watercolor. Don't know what this was used for. Probably a promo of some sort. Yeah, I don't, I've never seen the, you know, that reproduced anywhere else. I just like all of the lines coming down, the drapes of the clothing. Very cool. And some more of the dailies as we go through this. And this is a sequence from 1938. There's a Sunday. Now these are reproduced bigger than the Terry and the Pirates books just because this page layout is much bigger. So you get a much better sense of some of the detail once you get right in, in there. And these Sundays um, are different as well because they're reproduced the, the full page, full page versions here, rather than the half that we see in the, in the right. cherry books. Another great watercolor. Dragon Lady. Here's some original art. This one's cool because you get to see he uh, Dean makes a point of pointing out seeing when he when he recreates his strip for this this uh, half page version, they have to extend the art on all of the panels to make it fit. So you can see where the paste up ends and where the ink begins on these ones. Right. Okay, let's keep on going here. Let's get ahead a little bit. These are some other strips. 
Um, what does it say here? These special dailies were not part of the regular continuity. One of them is exclusively for the Atlanta Constitution, and one is a parody of the Washington Post. So cool little bonus features. Here we're getting into the later <coughs> years. Well, not the later years, the middle years of the strip. There's a lot of strips reprinted in here. Big advertisement. This is a wonderful page using like a, an ink wash. What a sense of action. Just the hat kind of floating in the middle here, knock off this guy's head. Great drawing. Yeah, the hat flying. Lantern on the ground. Up Just the a, a scenery shot. I love this. There's not too many of these kind of things. Just him studying scenery. Here's a sequence. I think this is printed in the in the Terry and the Pirate books, but you get a sense of how he works out his uh, panels. There's a cloth bookmark in here. Some character studies, model sheets. We also have some of these Sundays that these are like the color guides, it looks like he's colored them with watercolors to send off to the, uh, the newspapers so they know how to color his, his work. It's cool to see that kind of stuff yeah. too. It's gorgeous. It is. It's so, it's so much more vibrant than what it ends up being in the newspapers. This one especially is striking because of all of the, the war that's going on at night. So we get, you know, the explosions and backlit characters and he's playing with the different shades of, of night. Um, very, very nice. So that's interesting there on the right. That's actually one of my contributions, Curtis. It's okay. a, a, a Terry strip and it's, it's two of the same Terry strip, only the fourth panel is different. And uh, there's a published version, which is the bottom and an unpublished version. Yeah, and the text below here says that um, we don't know why exactly uh, it was. This one was not approved. There's there's some speculation, and but also like the, it's completely redrawn. He didn't just redraw the last panel, but all of these ones are totally redrawn. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's subtle yeah. differences in each in each, but uh, yeah, I think maybe that they were concerned all the type in the first uh, strip wouldn't reproduce well or be able to be read well but yeah it's uh, pretty tiny uh yeah it's it's cool that that artifact still exists though there's kind of caricature of himself every cartoonist has a caricature of, of themselves <laughs> Those were uh, on the right there, and they showed the Burma and Dragon Lady earlier. Those were promotional uh, prints that were a giveaway from the uh, Quaker Oats. Oh, nice. So if you were uh, eating your puffed wheat sparkies, <laughs> uh, you could send away. And there, was, there's a, there were other, uh, other promotions as well. There was a jingle contest. Uh, that they were involved in as well. Just some, some fun stuff from the 40s. Yeah, we're getting into the war years now, if you can't tell by these images. There's just some amazing stuff here. J. 
General Orders. He did a lot of stuff for the for the war effort. In fact, we're going to get pretty soon here um, Miss Lace. Here's a model for Miss Lace. A uh, comic strip he did specifically for the armed forces. That's some of these ones. It's very much in kind of the same style as Terry, but uh, just a, a little bit more risque. And there's been um, several reprint books over the year collecting mail call, and they're they're um, pretty. If you look on eBay, they're pretty easy to find. They're not very yeah. Expensive. Yeah, it didn't last too long, so the whole series is, can be collected in one nice volume. These ones are cool insignias that he designed. I love these. Yeah, they're they're pretty amazing, and there's you know, there's more than the, what's here in the book even. But uh, wow, he would any any <laughs> any uh, unit that asked, he would he would do one and send it off. So yeah, this kind of stuff doesn't get seen very much. And Disney did a ton of these. Like his yeah. artists did a ton of these as well, and there's like books devoted to those, but you don't get to see, you know, the non-Disney. Like the one on the winged horse. horse. I mean, that's just. <laughs> yeah, so wow. good. Here's a painting of his. It's very nice. Very nice portrait. Clinton Casey Vincent. And these, uh, I mean, these these written pieces, this and Dayton Kid and the, you know, there's two others in the book and the Christmas strips. To me, that's, if you want to know kind of some insight into Kenneth the person, I, I think those are the best strips. Yeah. Yeah, he really puts his heart in his sleeve writing these. Air Force Day strips from the various years in Steve Canyon and Terry. He always would uh, do special strips. Like he would stop his continuity to put things in here like this. So here they are collected on one page. Um, and, and if you can, it's worth seeking out. There's a book, Milton Kniff's America, that he also did with Dean for Eclipse um, back in the 80s that has these and the Christmas Day strips and, and more patriotic uh, bent things, Boy Scout things as well. Hmm. That's worth, uh, worth looking for. Now we get into the Steve Canyon years. For those of you who don't know, he uh, left Terry because he wanted to uh, create a strip that he had more control over. So he went and created Steve mm -hmm. Canyon. I think a part, partly was that, Curtis, and I think part of it was... Um, Security for Bunny really guided a lot of his actions. Um, you know, if if he got kicked off Terry, or if he died, you know, she's not going to get any money from the next guy who does Terry. Right. But he could get money from Steve Canyon. And I, I think that's also why you see in the 50s when, um, you know, he starts using assistance, I think, because that, that was after kind of a prolonged illness where he was like, you know, if I can't do the strip, we don't, you know, we don't make money and that's not security. So I think he did a lot of things guided by, you know, what he felt like providing for his wife meant. That's nice. That's really good. Here's one of those chalk talks you're talking about. He can be there with his easel. Actually, this is probably not exactly it. This is just him trying, <laughs> trying this woman here. <laughs> you actually can jump back to... 
237. So in the upper right, um, uh, that's the that's the Steve Kenny logo that Sickles drew that. Oh yeah, for, just like he did the Terry logo. Very nice. And that's and uh, when we found that Dean and Dean and I were like uh, giddy little kids. <laughs> no kidding, that's so cool. Like being being able to hold, you know, with the white gloves on, being able to hold that was um, a lot of fun. And then um, when you get to the time cover. Yeah, let's go back there. Just, it's still just <laughs> maddening that he here he painted one. They're like, nope. We're going to use one, <laughs> use our own artist with the same, you know, but copy your design. <laughs> <laughs> Man, because that's like you know that takes takes time and effort. Yeah, he didn't like it well enough. That's too bad. We're doing a story about you, but we don't want you to do the cover. <laughs> More designs. He had such a great sense of style when it comes to uh, clothing. Even the simple things like. Uh, just a t like a, you know sweater and, and pants he looks so great and a lot of these you know design things he would um, use as he would print up in black and white as prints and then he would hand color them and or he would have an assistant maybe color them and he would sign them and send them to fans who wrote in yeah, so wonderful. I wish uh, wish I could get some of those. Lots of Steve Canyon reprinted here. Whoops, I lost my connection. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, while I reboot my connection, let's take myself off of the solo and we can just talk a little bit. Technical difficulties, you know? Um, for you, what's your favorite part? What's your, do you have a favorite page in this book? Uh, favorite page in the book. Um, I don't, it's just such a treat, you know. Just everywhere you look, I don't know. Like a favorite, a favorite, a favorite page, piece of art. Just uh, uh, flipping through it. Oh, well, I'll tell you. We'll, when we get the connection back, we can look at it. But there's a um, a, a post office a cache he did for the post office with the Apollo astronauts. That's oh, okay. Um, we haven't I reached think that part just yet. Wonderful. It's one of my favorite Kenneth pieces, and I kind of <laughs> I kind of badgered Dean about putting it in the book. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. I'm glad you fought for it. Then if you if it means if you love it that much. Some of these just blow my mind with just uh, with the, like a lot of this is just suggestions of detail that he does. And it's just so great. Like so much detail put into here. And you step back and you're like, man, how do you do that? This is Sunday page with, with all of them lined up. I haven't read a lot of the Steve Canyon stuff yet. But it just looks amazing. Okay, great picture. Steve Canyon in China. That was a, uh, a puzzle. A puzzle. The printer's proof for the puzzle from 1952. Calendar. Yeah. This is uh, cool. Yeah. These, these, these uh, uh, syndicate calendar pieces. I would like you to uh, definitely put the effort into that, especially that the lower lower right there. I'd love to reproduce these calendars and use them on a year that that works. Where the dates line up. <laughs> Change the year. 
Yeah. Here's a cool Sunday where he just uses yellow, yellow highlights. Yeah, because it was a dream sequence. sequence. Wonderful stuff. And another example of some just the creativity that he's using here. I love this drawing of April Kane. No, not April, April Kane. What's her name? Um, April Kane's from. Uh, Or is it? Is it April Kane? I don't remember. Poteet? You know that is. Yeah, April Kane from Terry. Yeah. Here's, uh, here's the mistake on that page, uh, on that last page, Curtis, with the, the Poteet pictures. Okay. Uh, at the bottom. That's, so this, that's not Poteet. <laughs> That's um, Hollister Hall and her mom. So, aha. Uh -huh. Maybe that's what was confusing me here. But even though it's supposed to be a page, supposed to be a page of Poteet, but that's not Poteet in the lower right. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm nobody quibble. So. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see what you mean right here. Right. Yeah. Well. Right. That's okay. <laughs> Here's an image that gets reproduced a lot. This one has become kind of a standard Steve Canyon picture that we see pop up in a lot of places. Here's an. And he used that as a, a print. Yeah, I'm sure he did. This one is another example of a color guide for the for the newspaper people to follow. Yeah, see, like once we get to the back half of the book, it's a lot of it is strips, but not a whole lot of like the painting and stuff they were talking about. Here's a great portrait, so we do still get some examples of the other mediums he he worked in, the other styles he worked in. These are great. I love that pencil work. Just, just incredible. More advertisements. More insignias. Here's a great drawing of his large cast of characters, Steve Canyon. Another one of his prose yeah, that's, there's a, poems. There's a mural at uh, Ohio State. This one is? Uh-huh. It used to be in the student union, but when they re, I think they redid the student union and they, they moved that somewhere, but it's still on, still on campus. It's, you're still able to see it. We get um, the uh, last final chapter of kind of his later years, wrapping up Steve Canyon and some of the stuff afterwards. I love this one with the, as it gets more detailed as you get closer into the face, adding color. Here are some more of the portraits you were mentioning before. So if you go to the National Aviation Hall of Fame at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, you can see they don't have the originals up, but you can see all the portraits that he did, the reproductions of all the portraits. They're great. These are great too. Really uh, nice snapshots. These, these are also from uh, 
this was a, a for the post office a, a, a program that didn't quite get off the ground didn't what well, it didn't quite go anywhere that's too bad they look really good <laughs> and then the upper left that's the astronaut piece i was telling you about right yeah this is really nice i just love that that piece of art so here's one of the coolest off, things often huh? uh, i made inquiry i said i made inquiry curious as to where the original of that might be but nobody knows of this one yeah uh -huh. so Flipping through this book, this is the one that surprised me the most here. This page is an unproduced Bruce Lee comic strip by the amazing team of Milton Kniff and Noel Sickles under the name Paul Arthur. I would have loved to see more of this. For sure. Very cool. So we've kind of taken you through the whole book here. Yep, there's the end. That is it. We have uh, gone through the whole thing. I think I skipped a few pages here and there somewhere, but uh, for the most part, we've we've managed to go through it all. And Still, I hope that I you, agree with you, Curtis. I, uh, I I put it up there with. Uh... What were you saying? Sorry, it's a, it's a little little interference. Um, I, I agree with you, what you were saying at the beginning, you know, I put it up there and, uh, you know, at or near the top of uh, the LOAC books. Um, you know, I think that's up there for me and, and Scorchy. Yeah. Um, just uh, definitely, both, you know, amazing, you know, pieces of art. And then, of course, the, you know, the toad stuff. Yeah, and it's not just be like the artwork, of course, is just absolutely mind blowing to see. But uh, it's it's the package, the whole package together is is a really really nice book. It's got great quality uh, pages. The reproduction, the scans are are top notch, and um, and and Bruce's writing is really easy to to read and, and informative. Uh, Michael has a comment. He says, "Great book." Ben Cooper even made a Steve Canyon Halloween costume that can be seen in Google Images. So <laughs> maybe we should check that out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there good. is there is a Steve Canyon uh, kids costume, but I don't think it was a Ben Cooper. Um, it was a um, shoot it began with an H. I can't think it. It'll come to me after we get off here. But <laughs> okay, there was a Halloween costume. I don't think it was a Ben Cooper. Well, the one of the ones with like the plastic face. And it was like just kind of a sheet. That was kind of a popular style back then. Uh, okay, well, you know what? Let's uh, wrap this up here. Matt, is there, uh, if people want to contact you, is there a way to contact you? Oh, hold on. Michael Reed has the answer for us here. Halco. Halco, that's right. Thank that's you. That's the one. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to contact me, it's just. Uh, my last name, T-A-U-B-E-R, uh, at Fuse.net. Um, I did have uh, a blog where I wrote about Milton Kniff. I haven't updated it in a few years, um, but it's matttauber.blogspot.com if you want to check out some of, the, some of my old stuff that I wrote. Um, yeah. So uh, I really appreciate great. you having me on, Curtis. It, uh, yeah, it was I great to have you. Uh, working on and talk to me about it today. Thank you for your contributions to this book, and uh, thank you for giving us some insight as we flip through these pages. It was great to be able to to talk about it uh, with you and, and go over them with you. Uh, and for all of you who are out there as well, we hope that um, this has inspired you to maybe pick up this book. Um, it is it it's a big book. It's probably not going to be reprinted anymore just because it's very expensive um, because of its size, because of its quality. So there are copies out there still. You can get it through Diamond and whatnot. So I would encourage you to pick it up sooner than later because it it'll probably disappear like the Scorchy Smith book has. 
So anyway, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. And uh, I've got my ending theme song. So see you later, everybody. Thank you.